thank you, Patrick. Uh, also, uh, Luke and Bob, uh, great to see you again, and uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be in your company here. Uh, also, Lindsay, uh, good to see you again. Uh, we've done a clinic uh, at uh, Breakers in Auckland uh, just uh, well, maybe a couple of months, months ago. Anyway, uh, coaching clinics, uh, always a wide range of uh, uh, level of coaches that you're coaching and it's not always uh, easy to, um, to uh, reach out to all of you. Uh, for us coaches, it's, it's uh, a difficult uh, proposition to try to uh, uh, get something that you can get uh, out of what, we, uh, what we're presenting. But bottom line is, even if you get one or two things, uh, one or two ideas, or even uh, something that will uh, uh, lead you to another idea, uh, it's probably uh, enough. Uh, obviously, half an hour is, uh, is, uh, is a limited time, but uh, as Patrick said, you know, for us coaches, uh, those next uh, five or six days are very tense. Um, uh, time and I'm sure you can appreciate that. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, um, I spoke with Patrick a little bit about what uh, what to maybe cover and uh, he told me maybe about uh, uh, building an offense and uh, see how we uh, uh, try to, uh, um, apart from scoring, how, how to make it uh, difficult for the opposition to uh, to defend what we uh, what we run, uh, it's an old saying. Uh, it's not uh, what you run; it's how you run it. And uh, uh, coaches come up with, uh, and I'm one of those, is trying to be very smart and clever and have uh, uh, three down screens, five cross screens, seven diagonal screens in one offense, and. Uh, all those are really worthless until, uh, until you uh, teach players how to use and how to read just one single screen. Okay, so we'll start with, uh, with uh, those guys. Uh, it's great to uh, have you here and uh, thank you very much for helping us. And uh, just do, you know, try to uh, listen, try to tune in. But uh, bottom line is English is my second language and I'm sure you will not be un able to understand me very well. So anyway, uh, uh, it's going to be very hard with uh, this mic, uh, and I need to have it so you guys can listen. But uh, at times I might drop it and uh, and uh, talk to the guys with uh, my loud voice. So let's get everybody up. Uh, can we have the bigs, the fours and fives, on the free throw extended, and have the one, twos, and threes split up on? Uh, on uh, baseline and also at the point and get the balls up at the point. Okay, so uh, step outside of the court, step outside of the court. Uh, this diamond set up with, uh, with two screeners, uh, bottom uh, guy and uh, the point with the ball with the eventually fifth guy that we don't have now that will be at the free throw line. It's a very common way to enter the offenses these days. And I found it in the last uh, 10 years that I've been uh, working with it, playing with it. It's, uh, it is an effective way. There is a lot, of, uh, um, a lot of, it's a good court spacing and there's a lot of action that you can run out of it, okay? So to, to warm up and to start and to start talking about use of the screens, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, let's have another player with the ball up on top so we can get the rotation. We'll do one, we'll do one side uh, at the time, okay, so you'll set up in a screening position and this screening position is usually, uh, coaches teach to have it at the block. Uh, I don't like having it at the block because uh, usually the defenders in the in the uh, you know modern basketball, when the cutter goes to get the ball on on, uh, on the wing, it's a shirt tail, and it's uh, the you know players are very good at being right uh, behind. So a lot of times curling is is a very uh, effective option. And if you set the screen here on the block, 
it's, uh, it doesn't give you enough time and it's much easier to defend. So what I try uh, to do is, is get this screener to be midway between the block and the three-point line. I mean, this is not uh, a new three-point line, but it's not a hell of a difference. So uh, this is where I set the screen, okay? So to start with, make sure that you big that the screen is in this position, halfway between the three-point line and the black. Uh, you, and you decide where to screen depending on how the defense defends, okay? Uh, a lot of times defense, uh, most of the time defense will shirt tail around the screen, okay? But sometimes, you know, defense, uh, tactically coaches get the players to go over the screen because on the pop back that's not such an easy pass, okay? If that's the case, this screen will happen probably a, a, a foot or two higher than this, okay? But anyway, right now for a start, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the curls, Okay, so you're going to come off the screen, you're going to uh, get the ball behind the screen, you're going to attack the free throw, uh, the, the elbow there, okay, and you've got option of hitting the jump shot from the elbow or with the hesitation dribble, penetrate into the key, okay. Big, all right. I want you to be both four and five position, okay. If you're four position, you're flaring, okay. So as he comes off the screen, and he attacks the basket. If you're four, you're gonna be flaring down to the, to the baseline. If you're a three-point shooter, you can flare all the way to the three-point okay, line. If you're five, you're cutting to the basket, okay? So you got an option as a, as a cutter, when you, when you dribble the ball, you can shoot, you can penetrate, finish, or you can kick it out to the player if he's a four, or dish it down inside as a five. And rotation will be, you're coming off, you're attacking, curl, okay, finish, uh, passer will get the rebound, okay, you go at the top, the bigs will just exchange the lines. So you're going to come this way, the next guy going the other way, we're working just on the curls to start, okay, let's go. Go. Set the screens on the right position. Don't come in too close. Okay, just stop there. Now, uh, have you got anybody there? Okay, if you're making a move, let's uh, set up this side. If you're making a move and I'm defending you, how do you know, am I shirt tailing? Am I going over the screen? Or have I tripped and you can get the shot behind? How do you know that? Yep, how do you know? How, how can you see? Okay. So, none of you so far have actually looked behind to see what the defense does, okay? You gotta get into the habit when you're doing a drill, so when you're sprinting off the screen, to look at the ball and seeing with your per peripheral vision, see where the player is, okay? And you gotta look over the shoulder. That's number one thing. Number two thing, okay, you gotta try to shake off the defender, okay? So even when you're doing a drill, Okay, look for the fakes, okay? And there are also illegal ways to, to create advantage because you want to create advantage before you get to the screen, all right? Illegal ways that referees maybe don't see, it's a bit of holding because the defender is holding, but also a very effective way, come, I'll show you, okay? Very effective way to create advantage is if he's hugging you, so your defense, you're hugging, is to make a move and stop, okay? Let him bump. Okay, and then it gives you a push, gives you a push to come off the screen. Okay, so you pretty much, you know, he's hugging you, he's gonna get there, you make the move, stop, okay, without pushing out, okay, you're coming off. You wanna try to create advantage to start with, so you can then go. But the most important thing, as you're coming off, 
okay? You have to look over the shoulder and then look what you're gonna do. Are you gonna curl, are you gonna pop back, or are you gonna just come off the screen, catch and shoot, okay? Now, next thing, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go in a pop, pop back situation, okay? So, as if you're in defense, as I'm coming off the screen, I see you cheating and you're going over the screen. It's very important that you don't pop back early. It's important that you go past the screen because usually the defender goes over the screen when he is late, okay? So you gotta go past the screen and you're gonna be looking popping back with the call and also the hand. You're gonna try to change the angle of the screen there, okay? Either with your back, okay, or with the reverse pivot and you try to hold this guy and you change the angle of the screen, okay? So we're looking for a pop back now, okay? Let's go. Here we go, other side. Good. Change the angle of the screen. Good. Okay, also what you need to do to be effective in the game as well, we want you to dribble from the top because usually you, you're dribbling and you're under pressure. And what we want you to do, and I forgot to say this, on the kill cut, we want you obviously to fake the pass before you make the pass, but uh, also looking for a bounce pass into the kill and for a pop back, you're looking for a fake and the overhead pass down there. Okay, let's go a couple more times. Okay, just stop there. Now, on a pop back, when you go into pop back, okay, and go over there at the back, most of the time those screens will be higher, okay? There's certain players, you know, you do that in a scouting report, they like to go over the screen. A lot of coaches like to uh, encourage the players to go over the screens. If that happens, you gotta move the screen a little bit higher. Anyway, when the ball goes across, okay, two options, catch and shoot, okay, if he shoots the ball, you're going to the basket, okay? If he penetrates, we don't want you to go to the basket, we want you to wheel back to the 45, okay? Not behind because that's a tough pass. To the 45 is more than enough because if your man is helping on this penetration, that'll be an easy pass for a shot, okay? So let's have a catch and shoot or catch and drive and wheel back to the 45, let's go. You got to finish it off. You to drive no, you can you can shoot or you can drive. One or the other. Let's go. Change the angle of the screen. Still change the angle of the screen. Okay, next thing, if the, if the player is late, so if you make a move, and you make a good move, and there is a separation, so you're gonna be sprinting, you're gonna look over the shoulder, and you're gonna see that there is a gap, and you're gonna see that, and you're gonna step and adjust your screen, and seal, okay? So you step in, and you seal, and you try to hold this guy, okay? So you're gonna see there's a separation, you're looking to, for catch and shoot, okay? Or if you don't do a good job or the pass doesn't get there on time, you can penetrate. So, three options. Oh, well, first two options of catching the ball on the inside or the outside foot. First one is on the outside foot. You catch, you reverse pivot, you go into a shot. And you try to set your feet as the ball is catching. So you're going into from the catch into the shot or you're going into the shot on the inside foot, catch and shoot, okay? So, you can shoot or you can penetrate. You are sealing inside, you should be between me and the basket, okay? 
so not too low because I want to have a baseline penetration. If I go baseline, you wheel back to the 45. If I penetrate to the middle, you drop down to the short baseline. Okay, let's go. So you open up. You can pass it into post as well. Step into the screen. Step into the gap between the defender and your teammate. Step into the gap. Let's see some penetration now. Let's see some penetration. Middle penetration, drop down to the baseline. Okay, stop. Let's come in. Next guy, next guy. Go get, get the ball on the 45. Step into the screen, open up. Okay. Now if he goes if he goes middle penetration, okay, your man helps, you're stepping down to the baseline. Okay. If he goes baseline penetration, okay, you wheel back to his where he if your man helps, you got the ball there. If you start opening up high, okay, you're getting involved the weak side defensive help. Okay, over there it's very hard. All right, let's go. Make sure you catch and you're looking to be a threat for a shot. We set the screen so you can look to score. Here we go. One more. Yep. Okay. So we got this option to score out of this one screen. You're scoring out of the one screen, okay? Now you can do a lot of other things before or after, but the key is to try to score out of this, okay? And you're gonna read the defense and you're gonna look what, the, what they give you. You take that and you look to create advantage, you'll create opportunity to force the defensive help and then make, you know, good passes, okay? Now, to continue, let's get one player without the ball on the top of the diamond on the free throw line, okay? So now we've got both posts involved at the time, you can go either way, all right? So let's set up a post there, set up a post on the weak side. You look at the bottom guy, not the guy with the ball, all right? So, to build the offense, okay, from this, two options, and you know, uh, we don't really, like with, uh, with our national team, you know, at that level, you cannot hide anything, okay? I'm sure Brett and Andre got all the videos of all our games, like we got all the videos of all their games. You cannot hide anything, okay? And we run this little play, okay? We, you know, try to get the shot out of it, okay? And, uh, and uh, you know, doesn't matter if, if teams know what we do, okay? We're going to see what they do defensively, and we're going to try to act. Okay, and that's where the winning and losing comes, you know, who does the better job of reading what's going on, as well as obviously, you know, other things like playing with intensity and motivation, those, those things. Okay, so little play, okay, what we're going to do is you're going to come off, off the screen, okay, catch the ball. Now, come back, sorry, come back uh, here, okay. We're going to go into the pick and roll situation, okay, so let's make you a five. Let's make you a four. Okay, you good shooter? You can shoot? Okay, not bad. Okay, so he comes, so we, got, we want the four to be a better shooter. So as he comes off the screen, you're going to be going and setting the screen on the weak side. Okay, so the timing has to be right now. All right, and you're going to be going to the weak side 45, and you're going to be going to the weak side corner. So as the screen happens, okay, you're four men, you're going to pick and pop. Okay, you're gonna seal your men inside and look for the shot. Okay, let's go. Let's create out of that.
Okay. Now, I'm sure that you have heard of pick and, pick and roll or pick and pop before. Okay. And pick and roll and pick and pop is nothing new. It's been, running, been run for the last 50 years in basketball. Okay. But what, what we try to do to start with, and a lot of other coaches do the same thing, we want to try to create advantage before we run a pick and roll. So, with this guy coming off the screen, creating advantage with a sharp cut or a good fake, he's already got the ad advantage there. He comes off the screen, you are sprinting at the same time. All right? How are we going to create advantage for you? A lot of teams like to show on the ball screens. So if you go and set the ball screen, okay, and he gets the ball screen, and I go and throw a big show or double, okay, how, now go back here. Has anybody got an idea with this setup? Okay, go back to that post. How can we create advantage? So if I'm defending him, how is he going to be already in a screen without me being on, on his back? Fake, not, not a bad idea. Anything else? Screen from this guy? Why not? Okay, perfect. All right. So, at the same time he moves to that side, you set the screen for him. Okay, so all you have to do is it's like a rub screen. So this guy's late and you get to the corner and the timing now and the quality of your pass are very important when he catches the ball, a screen. Now, if you're, if you're four, you're going to be popping. If you're five, you're going to be diving to the basket. If you're five, you're going to be sealing down in there. So on a pick and pop, there's no rotation, defensive, okay? But if you're four, as he sets the screen, you're going to set the screen and dive to the basket. You're going to be popping out to the corner and then lifting up, okay? So to start with, let's make sure that you are a five and he's a four, okay? And you set the screen up there. Let's go down four. Okay, let's go, next five. Make sure you know who is four, who is five. So bigs communicate now who is four, who is five. Stop, stop, go back. You haven't seen anything, okay? Timing is all wrong now, okay? So top of the diamond, look at the bottom of the diamond, which way he goes. Then you go opposite and screen for the opposite side. Here we go. Go. Okay, stop. Did we know who is four is five? And he didn't know that. Okay, so there was no communication. Okay, let's go again. <coughs> stop. Okay, so now it's, you're too late. All right. So you got to make sure that you go right at the same time the bottom of the diamond goes. And he's got to know at the bottom, uh, at the top of the diamond to set the screen for you. But it's more important when you move than when he moves, because he can set the screen here. It's better if he sets it here, because he's got a shorter way to go to the corner. Okay, here we go. Go. Okay, that's not bad. Go, next five. Uh, you can go the other way, yeah, no problem. Here we go. Stop, go again. All right, you gotta focus. That's okay. It's a new thing. You gotta focus and just be in a screening position to start with. Okay, here we go. Go. Okay, go back to where you, where you caught the ball. Okay. A lot of teams these days, sideline pick and roll, they force down to the baseline. Okay, so we run this play. So the teams cannot do that, all right? So when you come off the screen, and if you catch the ball, and you square up, you give the defense chance to recover, and then force you down the sideline. So we don't want that. We want you to catch the ball on the move, okay? Put the dribble because you know your teammate is going to be there for the on-ball screen. Here we go. Here we go, one more time. Stop, go again, go again, go again. 
Bad timing? It's all about timing, it's all about spacing. No, go again. We're not focused. Here we go. So all three of you is going to watch this guy. He goes to your side, you're going to sprint. Okay, he goes this way, you're going to sprint. And you're going to also see. He goes this way, you screen for the weak side. Here you go. Here we go, last time. Okay, thanks guys, you can sit down there. Now, we all talk about fundamentals. We all talk about fundamentals. As much as I believe that fundamentals are something that stays there for a long time, a lot of times I know that when I coach something before that was fundamental, I don't coach it anymore. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, jump and pass. How many of you have been told players don't jump and pass? Today, if you're a guard and you cannot jump and pass, you cannot play. Because right? you have to jump and pass. Okay, you're coming off the screen, they're doubling you. If you don't know how to jump and pass, you got a problem, okay? So that's just one example. This thing, using the off-ball screens, okay? Uh, everybody's got their own versions. Uh, building, the, you know, building the little play, you got your own ideas. Okay, my ideas, like probably most of you, are the same, okay? Spacing, timing, okay? And it's all worthless unless players have got the basic fundamentals, okay? What are the basic fundamentals? Triple threat, triple threat, basic fundamental. I mean, I cannot see the player anymore being in triple threat position, okay? Because defenses are good all over them, so how can you be in a triple threat position, okay? You gotta be in, 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 in positions that is not a triple threat. Maybe double threat, maybe one threat, but not a triple threat position, but anyway, uh, timing is a problem. I know Brett is, can't wait to get on court. Um, thank you very much. That's, uh, as I said, you know, one or two ideas if you can pick up from, you know, what we spoke about. Um, it's very difficult in limited time, but thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.